Hello. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wild Prayer Circle here, grounding in nature, in nature and community. Um, I know that this is exciting for everybody because you're starting the day off. You have a full day of workshops and music ahead of you, and we are so happy that you are stopping by to take a moment to ground yourself in prayer before this beautiful day begins. I wanted to introduce um, our workshop really briefly in case you're kind of wandering in and wondering what you're wandering into. Um, this is Wild Prayer Circle. We are an open space for people of all faiths and perspectives to ground in nature, receive strength and nourishment for this wild journey, and share our intentions and prayers to carry us together as community. And if you are able, we do recommend um, joining from a location outdoors if you can, if you're on a hot spot or near an element of nature within your home or even your, your backdrop. I'd like to turn it over to uh, the beautiful, wonderful Sari Brown to just introduce herself into the workshop. Hello, everyone. It's so good to be here. Um, I, feel, I feel like we're here together. And that's a wonderful feeling, even though we're all in different places. Um, so my name is Sari Brown. I am a pastor of two churches, United Methodist Churches in the Thumb on the shores of Lake Huron, the Sunrise side. Um, and I'm also a singer songwriter and I've been a earthwork music artist for many years and in love with this healing magical gathering um, for pretty much as many years as it's been happening. Uh oh, is it looks like it looks so like Sari and I are co-hosting this unstable. Can you hear me, Sari? Yeah, okay, I can hear you now. <laughs> yeah, go okay. ahead. Okay. I'm in the woods. This full disclosure. I'm in the woods, so I might go in and out. Uh, um, but anyway, Upper Peninsula Wild is um um where I'm I'm curating this movement up up in the UP. So if we have any Upers, give us a shout out. There's Upers probably here today as well. Um, but Upper Peninsula Wild is a space where we we meet outdoors and we've been meeting outdoors even before the pandemic and we reconnect with the Christian roots um, that are really deep and rich with this spiritual guidance on being outside and being in nature and finding God in creation. So I just want to welcome everybody again today. If you're just trickling in, go ahead and say hello in the chat box if you're on YouTube. Also, if you know it, Let's say our um, let's say our ancestral grounds that we're standing on. And if you don't know it, maybe somebody could share. But I am coming to you from the ancestral, unceded lands of the Anishinaabe people, and I think that's important to um, acknowledge as we gather here for harvest gathering in prayer this morning. Sari, do you know your land acknowledgement? Um, there's just some overlap, I believe. Anishinaabe is one of the original peoples of this land. I think Suk is another, and there's a third one that I can't think of right now. So I need to get better at. <laughs> I need to get better at this, um, you know, remembering and bearing that in mind. But thank you for, yeah, thank you for. Bringing it's that a good practice of mindfulness and just remembering the ground that we're standing on, in the history. Yes. Um, so we're going to begin because we're all coming probably from different energies of the day. So let's just begin by centering ourselves with a centering exercise. We're going to breathe and ground ourselves into this space this morning. As we begin, let's take a moment to quiet our minds. Let go of the stresses and cares of the day. Let us begin by taking deep breaths as we inhale. We breathe in the fresh oxygen from the trees and we exhale for this life-sustaining energy. And continue to breathe and bring yourself fully present into this moment as we open up our wild prayer circle. Right now, we stand or sit surrounded by nature within creation, which is alive with divine presence, a presence innermost to creatures, 
a vital power that enlivens, nurtures, sparks, and fructifies them in every instant, sustaining them with a radiance of being as long as they exist. Creation is not distant from the holy. It is alive with divine presence, bearing God's sacred mark. Our destinies are intertwined and our actions reverberate throughout. And continue to breathe as we listen to the song and sing along as you feel called. I invite you to join me if you feel called to sing along with this Kin Metima song. Um, it's called Lord Listen to Your Children Praying and I've changed a little bit the words. I'm gonna sing with the word Lord as the person we're addressing on the first two times around so you can get a feel for the song and that's the original. And then I'm gonna start out with a different first word um, and I'll kind of name the word right before we start singing so that you can sing along as I change the, the name that we're addressing. Of course, for me, it's all one, one, one divine presence in different many names. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, fill each being in this place. Listen to your children praying. Show us you in each plant, in each place. Lord again. Lord, listen to your children praying. Children pray. Peace, fill each being in this place. Peace, peace. Listen to your 
children pray show us you in each plant in each face thank you sari I'm hoping it's a beautiful moment for you right now, wherever you may be. Um, we wanted to open up with grounding before we moved into a wilderness reflection. And this wilderness reflection is on trees, which are highlighted behind me. And sometimes when I offer wilderness reflections for UP Wild, I make it so that you can't see my face and you have to focus on the trees. But since um, you might have an element of, you might be outside or you might have an element of nature around you. Um, as you listen to this, you don't have to look at me. You can look behind me or just concentrate on what's around you. But this wilderness reflection is called Two Trees and it's by Mari Jordstadt. I used to know two trees. I called them delight and joy, but I do not know what they called themselves. They stood on a lawn next to each other, their branches interwoven. One would bloom first, then the next, but both bloomed before their leaves came in. Connecting to art. Okay, they were for me messengers of spring. I am unsure how to explain my interaction with the magnolia trees. I went to them for comfort, for a kind of companionship. They contributed to my sense of home in ways I cannot put into words. I do not know what the trees were to themselves, how they as trees experience the world or experience my, repeat, my repeated presence. I know I thought they were sisters or friends and that one's blooms would encourage the others to get going. But what were these trees to themselves? How did they experience each other? How did they feel the coming of spring? And how did they know when to put their flowers out? Or in our case in fall, put their, flower, put their leaves down on the ground. I recognize that my thoughts might smack on anthropomorphism or fruity sentimentality, but this only begs the question, what does real relationship between humans and trees look like? I don't know, but I know other people know. I have read from the mouths of Isaiah and Moses that the trees of the fields will clap their hands. I call today the heavens and the earth to bear witness against you. The heavens and the earth are looking at us. They're looking at you. Rather than viewing nature and its elements as raw materials or landscape, they describe the heavens and the earth, the mountains, the trees, the rivers as creatures that engage with other creatures and are able to hear and obey commands, protest human misconduct, lament and offer praise and affect human history. Thus, it is worthy for us to ponder how engaging with an active understanding of non-human nature might influence our ethics and the scope of our actions. For we are all one congregation. The trees of the forest take care of each other, even nourishing a fallen tree stump centuries after it has been cut down. Thus, they keep it alive. Let us look to the trees to see how they communicate and support each other as we navigate these challenging times. And as Karen Schrag offers in this poem called Think Like a Tree, she says, soak up the sun, affirm life's magic, be graceful in the wind, stand tall after a storm, feel refreshed after it rains, Grow strong without notice. Be prepared for each season. Provide shelter to strangers. Hand, 
hold hands through or stand tough through a cold spell. Emerge renewed at the first signs of spring. Stay deeply rooted while reaching for the sky. Be still long enough to hear your own leaves rustling. So let us take some time now with nature. You know, some of us, we have a background where we did go to church or we went to our faith gatherings and somebody would always, you know, preach at us or do a sermon. And we want to allow for nature to kind of speak to us. And Sari's going to guide us through that right now. Yeah. Sarah, you might need to unmute yourself. Thank you. I'm sorry. Cla rookie Zoom mistake. <laughs> oh, thank you. I was just saying thank you for that wonderful reflection and perfect entry into what we're about to do. And this would be the time if you want to step outside, if you haven't done that yet, um, and you, you know, it's not too hard to, with your device to, to get outside for a moment um, and I would invite you to find a tree to stand with or stand under or sit under or face or whatever feels right to you. Um, kind of let your intuition guide you. And if you're not outdoors, that's totally fine. Um, you can um, be with the house plant. You can just bring up a picture physical or digital of a tree that you love um, or you could even just have a mental image whatever feels right for you in this moment so I invite you to get towards whatever position whatever place you want to be in and even if you're still, I know this happens to me sometimes when I'm preparing for a meditation, you're still maybe scrambling and you're saying, oh, I do want to get out this one picture or I do want to get my shoes on and go outside. That's okay. Just take some deep breaths and you don't need to rush and trust that whatever part of this you need to be still for, you will be still and even in movement or even in activity, you can also be present to what is. So I invite you now to let your eyes close or just lower if that feels right to you. And if not, Turn your gaze inward. Whatever that means can be a little confusing if you're not actually closing your eyes, but you'll be able to feel in some moments at least that, that connection to those deep layers of the cosmos that are also reflected within you. Breathe deeply and notice where your breath wants to move into. Perhaps it's really deep into your belly, into your hips. Perhaps it's really deep in your heart space and kind of swirling around your heart. Sometimes it can feel really helpful and sweet and nourishing to put a hand on your heart. So I invite you to do that if you feel called. And take the deepest breath that you have so far today. Release it slowly. And I would like to invite you now 
to continue breathing in whatever way feels right to you. You can stay aware of breathing really deeply or just let your breath kind of go back to a normal rhythm. Stay aware in some little corner of your mind of the miracle that is your breath. And as we've mentioned already of the fact that air you're breathing was renewed and breathed out for you from trees. Perhaps from the tree or trees that you're standing or sitting with right now. And I invite you to imagine as you share this moment, whether it is a completely imagined moment or whether you are physically with a tree friend, with a plant friend, I invite you to imagine roots coming from your feet, from even from the base of your spine, from your bottom, and sinking down into the earth and merging with this tree, with these trees, with these plants that are breathing and giving us breath of life. Imagine your own roots that are not physical, but they are energetic and they are connected. Imagine them intertwining and connecting into this amazing, teeming network of life below the earth. These roots can receive some stress, some trauma, some fear, some grief that you might be holding as you breathe into this network of support. They can receive it and clean it and bring you back up, nourishment, joy. Vitality, courage, and so many other things. I don't want to presume to know what it is that you are receiving and needing to receive right now. So I invite you actually to feel into that for yourself. I'm going to leave some silence and feel with your intuition what it is that these roots are wanting to give you. Just trust whatever comes. And if nothing comes right away, that's okay. You are still being nurtured and revitalized. I invite you now to Turn your attention to the top of your head and to your third eye area and to your crown chakra if you're into chakras or just to that area of your body, regardless of 
um, how you feel about chakras, just to turn your attention there and to imagine that you have a line or lines, branches perhaps, sprouting up and out from you and reaching towards the branches of your tree, the trees, to intertwine with them and to reach towards the sky, the sun, the moon, the stars. the transcendent mystery of all that leads us and strengthens us to go beyond what we think is possible in ourselves, in our relationships, in our work, in our world. Feel those branches strong and growing still, reaching up towards heaven, the spirit realm, the subtle realm, the realm of vision. Of mystery. Of greatness and know that you also have within you the capacity to connect to this great mystery and to grow towards a purpose, a mission beyond even your wildest dreams. I want to give you a moment to let whatever wants to arise about your next step into your beautiful purpose, a word or a feeling or an image of what that will look like. I invite you to take one last deep breath of gratitude. Well, maybe two. <laughs> and thank your tree, your plant, your trees, all these sources of life. And when you are ready, you can turn your gaze back outwards or open your eyes and come back into this space and at this point I Oops, oh, I guess I just, oops, I guess I, un, I muted myself again, sorry. Um, I'm on my cell phone still, so I don't, I can't see everything that's happening, but, um, but now is our time for sharing. Um, if you would like to leave a comment, if you are on Zoom and would like to share in those comments or even um, with your voice, with your image, um, just to say briefly anything that came up for you, um, how that experience was for you. Um, and if you feel called just to share, you know, a few words about what, what you felt in that experience. I have no idea if, um, <laughs> you know what, I'm going to start walking inside, but I have no idea if there are 
YouTube comments going on. So I'm just going to trust that if there are, then, uh, then you all will, <laughs> then the other oh. folks on here will tell me. <laughs> So of course, when we gather together at harvest gathering in person, we'd be in a circle. We would have yeah. this time to share with each other to come back and thing we have that the Ben and Justin and Seth and everybody have been working so hard for this first attempt yes. is um, commenting on YouTube, which uh, both Sari and I cannot see. So. Um, but that doesn't mean that we need to see it. It's just your time to share anything that came up for you or anything you'd like to share today. Maybe you have something you just need to get off your chest. Go ahead and use that time now to share it. We'll give you just about another minute or so. I am getting back now to my to my computer and I can see the I can see what's going on a little better there. Or if you have a giant cup of coffee, go ahead and take a swig now. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm back at <laughs> I'm back at home base, and I am seeing um, oh, thanks, Seth. Nice to see you on here, and nice to see Dan and Natalie. Um, says that she's feeling humble and hopeful, trusting that I'm always connected and cared for. Thank you. Oh. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Natalie. Mm. And thanks, Justin. Didn't know how bad I needed this this morning, truly. He says, thank you so much. Feeling grounded and connected more than ever. Thank you. And Kim says, thank you for sharing with us. Mm. I'm feeling really grateful just to have been able to share this time and that it was this grounding experience, this uplifting experience for, for others. And um, I guess I can, I can share just for myself that I often when I'm leaving something like that, I don't feel um, as grounded as I would like. Uh, you know, it's like I'm not actually doing that work myself as I'm leading it. And this time I felt of course, it's still not the same, um, uh, but I, I did feel more able to really connect to, to connect to that strength of, of my tree. And in some ways, I think that that shows the power of like, it's not just me leading it. I'm actually facilitating my willow tree leading this grounding moment. And so I'm receiving that nourishment too. Um, so that was, that was special for me just from a facilitator's perspective. I had um, beautiful distractions in the sense that there probably aren't distractions, but I was noticing that the leaves were going behind me with the wind and we had um, birds flying over and little chipmunks coming over. What, what are you guys doing? And then running away. So, uh -huh. you know, there's just so much life around us and it's so fun to just stay. And especially when we're inside during this time, it's extra important to make sure that we get outside to just notice that we aren't alone and that life is surrounding us everywhere we look. Yes, exactly. Um, I, lo I love, I love uh, my friend Carl Gladstone just, just wrote in, never try to root in this reflection with a crazy one-year-old and hyper five-year-old, but it kind of helped. So that's another example of beautiful distractions. <laughs> um, also can be difficult, but at the same time, so beautiful. Um, I do want to invite, um, just because I know that, you know, they are on here, if, 
if Brooke or Lewis or Justin, if you do want to say anything or go on, you know, turn your video on, there's no pressure. You absolutely don't have to, but I just wanted to acknowledge that that's, that's totally open if you feel called to do that. Um, so I'll just give a second if you do, if you do feel like doing that, but, but no pressure at all. Hi, Sari. Hi, everyone. Hi, Brooke. <laughs> I feel so grateful. I feel so held and supported and present and connected. And, you know, I think we've all been experiencing some grief that we're not physically together, but the signs, whether it's the chipmunks or this timing of you coming on this morning um, are just beautiful reminders to me, vivid reminders to me that we are together and we're in this mission and this life and this breath together. And when I'm breathing for myself, I'm breathing for everyone. And we, we do that from right where we are. So I'm just, I'm so grateful. Um, another little share is that like the seasons, earthwork over all these years marks breakthroughs. And in my healing journey, there are just distinct breakthroughs and realizations and check-ins that I have every year when harvest rolls around. And it's such an important part of my journey and, and this year is no less so and this morning is a big part of that so I just want to thank you all for showing up in these ways oh wow yeah I feel all of that I feel the breakthroughs every um yeah every harvest gathering has has breakthroughs for me too so I <laughs> I just yeah I love that that, that it's such a such a special place. It's such a privilege that we get to do this every year. I imagine all of us share that sentiment, Brooke, of just the harvest gathering being something that we needed in our lives at the time it was. I know for me, when I first met Sari, it was 2003. And when I first met Seth, that was my first harvest gathering and that pivoted my life into a whole new direction, just being together in community. And I feel like we all have those, um, those moments in, in gratitude for being here in this circle today. So thank you for sharing that. It's nice to see some, some faces too. Um, so let us, I'm being mindful of time as well. So let us move into praying together. Does that sound good, Sari? Yes. And I do want to just say like either at the beginning or the end, maybe just to have a moment of silence for Ruth Bader Ginsburg and everything that it means that we've lost her and that both also may carry on her legacy and live with hope and bring more justice as she did. So, um, okay. I, I don't want to, you know, however you want to work that in because you kind of were organizing this part. <laughs> Let's do that. We will do that in the beginning after I open up and we'll take a moment of silence and I'll explain it. Okay, thank you, Sari, for being mindful of that. So I'm going to ring our prayer bell. This is a time for us to pray together in community. After each prayer, you may say, creator of life, hear our prayer. At the end, there will be time for you to actually submit your own prayer into the chat box, or you can hold it into the silence of your heart. Again, you don't have to repeat the response, only if it feels good for you to do so. Creator of all life, we ask you to hear our prayers. We ask you to hear the prayers that we hold in our hearts, especially those for the faithfully departed that are among us, including Ruth, Gator, Ruth Ginsburg, and all of those that we care for, all of those that we are concerned about within our family, our friends circle, or just the wider cultural circle of our lives, all those working for peace and justice, we hold a moment of silence for them. We ask for the light of your love to surround them and to surround us always. As we respond, creator of life, hear our prayer. 
creator of life and sustainer of seed and soil, of tree and flower, you have created this world and all that lives in it. Teach us how to be more mindful of the rest of your congregation of mammals, insects, plants, trees, and fungi, to act more like stewards than dominators of these natural and spiritual resources. Creator of all life, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our earth, which is a sanctuary filled with God's presence, a home for us to share with all of creation. Creator of all life, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the nourishment and the inspiration, the literal breath of life inside of us that we receive from trees and plants that bear food to eat and pray that we may tend and care for them with due joy and wisdom. Creator of all life, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the water that flows from your rivers, lakes, and streams that renews the face of the earth, that quenches our thirst and keeps our climate in balance. We pray that we may learn to protect this precious source of life. Creator of all life, hear our prayer. We pray for the places where the land is burning and the air is thick with smoke, or the rivers and lakes and very skies themselves are drying out, or the rain will not stop and the flood waters are rising, where nature can no longer withstand our careless mistreatment and is thrown wildly out of balance. May we find a way to help our home to heal. Creator of all life, hear our prayer. And this is the prayer of the bee. Lord, mon Dieu, I am not one to despise your gifts. May you be blessed who spread the riches of your sweetness for my zeal. Let my small span of ardent life melt into our great communal task, la grande activité communautaire, to lift up to your glory this temple of sweetness, a citadel of incense, a holy candle, a myriad celled molded of your graces and your and of my hidden work. Creator of all life, hear our prayers. This is the prayer of the tortoise. A little patience, O oh God, I am coming. One must take nature as she is. It is not I who made her. I do not mean to criticize this house on my back. It has its points, but you must admit, mon Dieu, it is heavy to carry. Still, let us hope that this double enclosure, my shell and my heart will never be shut to you. Creator of all life, hear our prayers. And I'd like to allow some time for you to submit your prayer. Uh, go ahead and put it in the comment box or just hold it in the intentions that you have right now. And feel free to keep submitting those, even if they're not coming to you right now. They will be seen by us, but also by the one who has created us. And one last time together, we say, creator of all, all life, life, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Let our prayers rise like incense before you. Sari. Mm. Thank you, thank you to everyone. And especially to Lanny, because this was your idea and you brought this together and thank you. <laughs> and thank you to Seth and we got um, Ben Johnson behind the scenes here. We got Justin helping out. Um, we got a lot of people. Um, Seth and everyone at the farm and uh, it's part of 
harvest gathering, always bringing it together. Um, it still required work and please support harvest gathering. Please buy your tickets as if you had um, tickets, um, you know, give those donations um, for this wonderful, wonderful gathering. So thank you for being with us. I'm gonna play a little song that uh, is about seeing and feeling and experiencing and tasting and touching and smelling God <laughs> in, in everything. I can see you now. I looked up from the ground. You smiled at me and said you've been missing out. I'm an absolute beginner Learning what life's about I found your strong arms in an old oak tree I smell your sweet skin in its bark as it breathes I hear your laughter in the poplar leaves I feel your nourishment in the roots beneath my feet. I can see you now. I started looking around. If I stumble and fall for the beauty I found, well, I'm an absolute beginner. Learning what love's about. I chase your passion into the waves as they rise I taste your tender kiss in the lake's breezy sighs I see your open heart in a golden purple surprise I catch your immense gaze in a little animal's eyes It would be so easy to do what I know best Walk fast, act like a movie And work even when you rest But you stopped me in my tracks With a gentle, loving egg So I'm learning to be gentle And I'm learning to love back I can see you I hear you calling me down, stuck in the mud and lost in the clouds. I'm an absolute beginner, learning what heaven's about. Thank you so much, all of you, for your beautiful presence and your connection to this great web of life and your role in nurturing and caring for it. So bless you as you continue in your harvest gathering experience this year. Enjoy the music. Yes. <laughs> Thank you all for being here in this space with us today as we close our wild prayer circle. We want you all to know that we're holding you all in the intentions of our hearts. Um, Justin, Sari, and I particularly this week. So yes. you are with us and you're prayed for. Thank you all for being here. Yeah. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you.